In this tutorial, we'll look at how to create a data table in Bootstrap 5. All right, so I just have an HTML boilerplate here. It's currently empty. My CSS is empty as well. So what I'm going to use is called datatables.net. So you can go to their website and they make it very easy to change your HTML5 table into something that looks really nice. And some of their examples um, are actually all that you need. So you can go to the website, you can click on their examples. And then if you go to styling, we're going to use the Bootstrap 5 styling, but you know, if you're using Foundation or Bulma, you know, you can get the appropriate styling for those libraries. So here we have Bootstrap 5 and they show you an example. Right, so this is actually already a very nice table. You can already, you know, change the number of entries shown, right? You can already sort, you can search by text and you even get pagination, right? So all of the essential features of a data table is already included. So below there, below the example, they show you how to include that. So let's start off with the HTML. So it's just an HTML5 table, right? And then the styling, well, uh, let's see how we can copy this easily. The styling is just um, specific to Bootstrap 5, right? So I'm gonna include all of this HTML. Let's see if that's gonna work. It's a bit annoying copying that here. Make sure you have everything. I'm gonna paste it here in my HTML. I'm gonna hold Shift Alt F to format it automatically here in Visual Studio Code. Now, since there is so much HTML, you can also collapse this, right? So here I can click on this and it will collapse all of that. So then I'm gonna save the file. I'm gonna refresh. And this is what you get out of the box. Now all right, let me zoom in a little bit, right? So this is the raw HTML. And now for Bootstrap 5, they show you how to style this. So you need to, you need to include a couple of things. So for the CSS, you need to include the Bootstrap CSS portion. And that's this one. And then they also have some CSS that comes from data tables itself, right? So now what they give you is actually just a link to the raw CSS, right? So this is just the CSS from Bootstrap, for example. So you can copy the URL and you can just create a link tag, right? So just like my own style sheet here, I can link to this style sheet here, right? So I can just say um, link, right? So you only have to press link in Visual Studio Code and just press tab and you get that style sheet or the entire um, link element for a style sheet, right? And then um, the other one is this one. Make sure you also get this one. You can paste the URL. So that's for the CSS. And let's see what we get if we refresh. So that will already change it quite a bit. That already looks much better, but there is no um, you know, functionality yet, right? Because when you start working with click events, you need to work with JavaScript. So then we can go here, JavaScript. And here you can see they are linking to three other things here. So they're linking to the jQuery library. Then they have some specific jQuery for data tables. And then there's also some um, Bootstrap 5 uh, JavaScript. So I'm gonna open this up, right? You can see the actual JavaScript that you're gonna include. This is the raw JavaScript. So to create a script tag here, you can do it in um, the head uh, these days. I'm gonna do that after the, the, the CSS. You can also do it before. I think it doesn't really matter. I've seen some uh, data, but I think it doesn't really matter. You can press tab here in what order you do, right? So you can link to the CSS first and then the JavaScript or the other way around. So with JavaScript, it's a bit strange. You don't you don't use link, but you use script and then the source attribute. So let's see, we need to include jQuery. When you do it in the head, it's best to use the defer attribute here in this case. This is a best practice. This will not block parsing the rest of the page because usually JavaScript is blocking here. Um, so in the past, what people did is they put the script at the end of the body. You don't have to do that anymore. You can just include it in the head, but then use the defer attribute. Okay. I'm actually just gonna hold shift alt down arrow key to duplicate this line because we have two other scripts that we need to include here, right? So then we have this and also this one and the defer actually respects the order actually. So this script will be executed before this one. So this script may actually use the jQuery uh, variable, right? But, that, but that's created by this script because, right? So make sure that, I'm actually not sure if that's the case, but I'm just saying that in case you have multiple scripts and where one script depends on some previous script, that's no problem here because defer uh, respects the order. I'm actually not sure if that's the case here, but uh, in any case, it's good to know, I think. So now when we do that and now I refresh, let's see what we get. So just including that actually doesn't work. So we forgot one thing. You do need to initialize it like this. Right, so don't forget about this. So maybe you have your own script file, right? So then let's also add our own script here. Um, and actually we can do this at the end of the body or actually just do it, let's just do it, you know, how you would do it in the real world with an external script file. So we could have our own script, script.js, just like we have our own style sheet, right? Also we'll add defer here and then I would create that file, script.js. And you need to paste that here. So right, so it's gonna say when the document is ready, 
it's gonna use the example ID, right? So make sure you didn't change the ID because this, this is the ID of the table and it's gonna call that method, data table method, right? So then th that will actually add all the functionality. So now we refresh, you can see we have our table here and now it has all of these functionalities, including search, pagination, sorting, you know, changing the number of entries, showing the total, right? It's very nice, basic example, but this should cover most of the use cases that you want to use a table for. Now you can see the default styling actually is actually sitting right against the viewport because it has a, a width of 100%. So what you can do is you can just use bootstrap styling, right? So we have a container uh, a class in bootstrap, which will restrict the width, right? So you can just put all of that in here and that container will restrict the width. So you get a more nice um, centered uh, type of look. And this is also responsive, right? So as the viewport gets smaller and smaller, it will increase the, 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 the margin or padding at some point. And also the table itself will actually also adapt to the size of the viewport, right? So it's actually a very nice option that you have, datatables.net. Now it's sitting against the top here, so we could also add maybe um, some margin or padding, padding on the top of, uh, well, let's pick five. And you can just continue using the typical bootstrap styling, right? Maybe this is still too wide for you. You can restrain the width even more. Maybe the width here should be 50%, right? Now you get a more uh, narrow view, right? You can play around with typical bootstrap uh, utility classes like that. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.